What up boys and welcome back to another video. So as always, every single Monday we take a look at the mailbox and then we answer questions from you guys. So every single week I ask you guys to leave your questions down below in the comment section. And if you see a question that has been asked by someone else that you want me to answer, make sure you press like upvote on the comments so I can see that there's a lot of people interested in it. So first of all, we're just going to clean out this mailbox right here. See how much gold we make. I've actually sold 223 auctions this week, which isn't bad at all. But I know that I'm getting less gold per auction uh, these days. So we're going to see if there's anything worth mentioning. We do have the black velvet rope, which I actually got while I was farming. And I was going to check the value on it. And it was only like 4,000 gold. So I bought them all and reposted. So now I sold one for 23,000 gold. That's not bad at all. And then we just got like a bunch of these uh, farmed and crafted transport items going for a couple hundred gold to a couple, couple thousand gold. And it all adds up to be 111,000 gold on the first 50 auctions. Uh, so nothing too fancy. I remember when I did the uh, from zero to uh, gold cap challenge with transmog only. We usually sold like anywhere between 150 to 250 auctions. But we also got like six seven hundred thousand gold a week on uh on those transmogs uh but that was different i was focusing on it i was reposting constantly like every single day i was reposting at least twice so naturally i made more gold and right now i just post my transport items myself and if they sell that's good if they don't sell no worries right my focus definitely more on the farming side than the uh auction outside like reposting i just can't be arsed uh, to, do, to focus on that right now. Let me see. Clearing out this. 181,000 gold so far. So like. You guys can see that you can easily make. Like enough to buy a WoW token. At least one WoW token weekly. By being as casual uh, about it as I am. Obviously my auction is pretty good. I still have like. Uh, 1.6k items I believe. Worth like. 16 17 million so my auction house is steady but i don't use a lot of time on it now i'm now at the point where my auction house is super steady so i just need to like refill it with items every now and then and next clean out dark iron pulverizer that one's crafted flame bit bing gloves forgotten peacekeeper loot from uh island of thunder we did sell two spellfire items that's over 100 000 gold just on those and then just a bunch of shitty items pretty much but over 200,000 gold on uh, these 50 auctions so uh, we're going somewhere this is good it's definitely good we're going to be at above 400,000 gold uh after this clean out more than halfway through it though come on 60 gold item so i yes i do sell items worth 60 gold like basically when I do crafting, I sell items that goes for like under, under like 100 gold. I just look at the profit. If I can make uh, like 400% profit and I know that it sells fast, might as well just craft it, you know. And it's all good. It's not like I'm spending any gold on it. Uh, next page, Dreadrunner. Dreadrunner is a lot of crafted items. Unyielding blood plate. Frost investment. Is it? Bunch of farm items too, but the ones uh, that are worth a couple of thousand gold are crafted. 100,000 gold in that clean out, so we're going to make over half a million. It's not bad. That's a couple of tokens uh, just on this transmog. So in the past, I've also liked to maximize my income. I've pretty much just farmed up a steady auction house. And uh, then in between reposts, I've farmed materials to get some steady income as well. And that's usually what has made me the, uh, the most amount of gold. By keeping transmogs active, like always undercutting the transmog items, keep on restocking the auction house with transmogs, but also doing materials. Because right now, I'm not doing any steady farms whatsoever. I'm only out there hunting for the uh, RNG items, the transmogs, which is what I enjoy the most. So uh, it's all good. Replica Beastmaster Mantle, 41k. Besides from... That one, there is actually nothing of interest, yeah. But we made almost 600,000 gold. It's better than last week, uh, twice as much, actually. Probably. Last week was really bad. So uh, it's going up. It's going up. 
but I'm not really worried. I know that if I did undercut scans uh, two, three times a day, I could have made over a million this week probably, because my auction house is really good right now. But 583,000 gold this week on Transmog. So now we're gonna jump over to you guys' questions. Let's see if there's any trolley questions or if they're all legit. These are like the top five. This one, let me see. What is the item that made you the most gold? Doesn't matter if it's a single item or an item that you sold a few times or items that you sell in stacks like herbs, etc. That's a really good question. I know for a fact that the item, the single item that I've made the most gold on that I've uh, farmed is Shadow Weave Masks. You guys are probably familiar with the Shadow Weave Mask. You can get the secret mount, but in order to get the secret mount, you had to get the Shadow Weave Mask. And uh, we made millions on it. I made a lot of gold in that mask, and I. Uh, the cool thing about it, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, they went out and they, uh, they farmed, like the materials, and so did I. Like I found really good farms to get the shadow silk to craft this mask, so it was pretty much just raw profit for me. So uh, if uh, Tsen told me that I made. 4 million gold on it, I did make 4 million gold, it's not like I spent a million gold in uh, in gold trying to craft it. So that is definitely my number one item. Number two is uh, according to my TSM or like any of the uh, the beef or but that's because I uh, used to farm it and I used to buy it in trade chat for less than it went on for the auction house and I sold it in big stacks because the auction house was so slow so you could literally just buy it in trade chat and sell it on the auction house or buy small stacks on the auction house make it a big stack and people would buy uh, the big stacks that was a lot of gold for me so uh, yeah hopefully that answered your question uh, well enough and here you have the uh, the shadow with mask they sell super slowly and uh, they don't go for nearly as much as they went for it but i still sell a couple of them though so uh next question Super keen for classic. A lot of people are keen for classic, and I've been asked this question even on my latest videos like a billion times. Uh, have you looked at the best class for farming classic, and what are you going to main? Yes, I'm super keen for classic too. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I am 100% sure what class I will play in classic. Uh, I get asked that question almost daily on my live stream on Twitch, but uh, there's no way I'm telling yet. I want to keep it a secret uh for well not to be like a douchebag and be the only guy who plays this certain class so i can be the only one it's just i want there to be like a kind of mystique about it because i have selected this one class because of like a uh, a couple of farms that you pretty much need to be this class to do and a lot of people will be like oh student's going to play a hunter like everyone else and do like dungeon runs and uh make tons of gold not no everyone is going to be playing a hunter like Gold farmers are going to be, yeah, gold farmers are the best, man. Let's do a hunter. No, I don't, I'm not going to play a hunter, but you guys are going to have to wait and see, though. Well, I'm super, super keen. Super keen. Next question. Even though I didn't exactly even answer that one, because I don't want to. But, hey, uh, student, how exactly do you deal with items that are below your minimum price at a certain time, but usually do sell pretty well? How do you store them, deal with the limited bag space? So, basically, let's say that you guys are farming the, uh, the Shadow Weave Mask. If this was a farmed item, this is a crafted item. But let's say that this is a crafted item. You farm them all the time because they sell constantly, and then some ass is undercutting, and uh, they're now... 20% of what you used to sell them for. So what do you do? Me personally, I don't give a fuck. I, I will keep on undercutting. Basically, my mentality is to push them off the auction now. So let's say that you farm Shadow Wind Mask, you make 50,000 gold an hour. A guy comes along, he undercuts you, and with the price that he's selling him at, he's only going to make like seven, 8,000 gold per hour. Then I don't really give a shit. I'm going to undercut him, him again. Like, I'm going to push it down to the... Uh, the point where he doesn't want to do the farm anymore because it's just not making any gold, right? So I just keep on undercutting, undercutting, undercutting all the time. And uh, I do that because it's a proven tactic. It has worked for me many, many times. Just keep on undercutting, sell it for 10% value, 20% value. It always comes to a point where you should reset, you should buy their auctions and then like reset the value. But it all depends on what kind of item it is. If it's an item that's super hard to get, let's say you have a Felsty Longblade, 
you obviously uh, want to like buy it out and reset the market value because the chances of that guy, that clown, going and getting another one is really, really small, right? But if it's an item that you can easily get, you don't want to keep on buying him up because basically what's going to happen is that you're going to buy his auctions and he's going to be happy with the price that he's selling the items at. So he's just going to go out and farm more and more and more and you're just going to keep on buying it and he's going to be super happy. So uh, yeah, when items that's easy to obtain, I always undercut down to the point where they don't want to do the farm anymore. Exclusive, like expensive items, uh, I buy it and reset it. So next question. This might have been asked previously. I've tried looking back and didn't see it. How do you keep track of the 100 runs? Yeah, so if you guys aren't aware, I'm currently doing 100 runs videos where I go and do 100 of every single dungeon. And uh, then I take a look at the loot that I have in the end by saving up all the loot. And yes, well, I don't really use pen and paper, but I use a notepad. So every time I've done 10 runs, I type it in the notepad, go over to next dungeon, do 10 runs, type it in the notepad. So that's how I do it. Because you can easily see it in like the statistic page, but you have to kill the last boss and you don't always kill the last boss in all dungeons. Uh, so that's how I deal with that one. And the uh, next one, our last one, load the video student. My question is when looking into moving into multiple realms for selling transmo, what do you look for? I've been thinking about setting up another server, but I want to make sure I invest correctly. I have made videos about this, like what server you should pick, like how to uh, know what server you should pick. Uh, for me, I've only selected realms that you guys want me to play on. Started out playing on a low pop. People told me it was really easy to uh, make gold cap on a low pop because the prices were higher. I said, all right, fuck it. I'll go to a medium pop. Went to a medium pop. People told me it was uh, easy to get gold cap on medium pop because it was like a, a balance between good prices and it sold fast. I said, all right, I'll go and I'll play on your high pop. And uh, I did. Played on high pop, got gold cap, gold cap on high pop. So it's all about knowing your market and uh, basically just going with like finding niche farms seeing what works what doesn't work you can make gold cap on any realm doesn't matter if it's low pop and dead as fuck i've done it it's not hard well it is hard it requires a lot of time it does it's not like it's super easy to get gold cap on low pop but if you put in the like the time to research and see what you can sell and what you can sell a lot of you can definitely do it so uh, basically, if you're into transport and you want to select your realm right now, my best advice is to always go for a high pop realm. Doesn't really matter which high pop realms you pick, but just go for a realm where a lot of people are playing because if you have tried transport farming, you know that it's not hard to get the transmog items. It's hard to sell the transmog items. So being on a high pop, even though you will get less gold for your items, at least they will sell and small... Uh, Small amounts will add up to a big amount if you sell enough of them. So that's my number one advice when it comes to choosing realm. Or you can go on like a previously medium pop, now known as a high pop with a new system, such as uh, Ravencrest or Sylvanas and so on. They typically are like balanced enough where you have uh, not too many people posting the items, um, but there's still enough people to buy your auctions. You usually get a better gold per hour on a on a like freshly high pop. When I say freshly high pop, you have a lot of realms that used to be medium pop and then Blizzard changed the uh, the amounts of players needed to be a high pop. They basically lowered it. So a lot of medium pops became high pop. So a lot of those realms are still really, really good. Like Sylvanas would definitely advise you guys to play on it. But uh, that was the last question of today. So if you guys got any more questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comments section and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, bye bye.